Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Marion White, and welcome to Larchmont today. And my co-host since the early 1990s when we began, Ken Bialo. Very nice to see you, Marion, <laughs> after this long summer absence. <laughs> well, it was fun taking a month off, I must say. <laughs> but uh, just to remind people about our roots in Larchmont, mm -hmm. you, of course, were trustee on the Larchmont Village Board for 11 years and mayor for four years, mm -hmm. um, about the best mayor we've ever had, I would say. Oh, <laughs> flattery will get you absolutely <laughs> nowhere. And uh, you also served on many commissions and um, committees and stuff. Yes, As did all that you, Mary. Now, all being we, volunteer. now <laughs> we have to go back to uh, Marion was <laughs> trustee for two terms in the early '90s, and then the chair of the late and. In certain <laughs> cases, lamented <laughs> Republic, <laughs> Village Republican Party in Larchmont. Yes. Yes, you Those did. were fun times. Those were fun times. <laughs> Pick the candidates, <laughs> try and raise some money, and get everybody walking around and talking. Well, right? didn't we, our first year that we were trustees was when Larchmont was celebrating 100 years, right? That's true, 1991. Right. And the celebration. We both lived to, 100, <laughs> to the 125th. <laughs> Well, and I expect to be around for the 150th well, at here, least. Here's your thing, then. Here's your cue. Yes. Go to town. Uh, well, I just wanted to remember what a deadly hot day that was. It was, <laughs> it was <brutal>. awful. <laughs> so they're very smart now. They're having the celebration, not in summer, but um, Saturday, September 26th, a full day of activities are planned. Um, it's going to begin at 10.30 a.m. at St. Augustine's Church, where there will be a service and um, a coffee house will be open in the cafeteria. At noon, the entertainment will begin. And from 1 to 4, Larchmont Avenue between the Post Road and Cherry Avenue will transform for the inaugural Larchmont Day Street Festival with big trucks. Well, you were there when, did you start the we big truck We started big day? trucks, we started the dog parade, we started the art festival, yes. This is, it seems to me like what they're talking about is some sort of a consolidation of those three activities with an overlay of uh, extra activity on the basis of the 125th anniversary. But all that stuff was annual. I don't know whether, I don't know whether they still do the dog parade. I don't know whether they're going to do a dog parade. In, well, because it's a event. very small area, right? I mean, it's just from the post road well, to they were very small dogs. <laughs> well, not all of them. <laughs> So, and then there's going to be a cocktail hour, and then there's a dinner cocktail, dance. Cocktail hour for the donors, for people who gave money. Oh, well, Which doesn't, they ought to get something. Does that something. include you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyway, I, I think the weather's supposed to be good. So, I hope everyone has fun getting out and celebrating. Okay. There you go. Happy 125th, Larchmont. You bet. Um, and then the other news that I find interesting is that the LMC TV headquarters, they're proposing to move it to the village of Ameranek's first firehouse, which um, has a lot of charm, but doesn't look like much of a house for a television studio. I think it would have to be modified quite a bit. But the exterior is very charming and it would be fun to have a place like that. Now it's empty, right? Maybe they'll leave the exterior the way it is. Well, that would be nice, but clearly they'd have to so do a lot still, of work. So it would continue to be charming and then they could do things on the <laughs> inside. That would be practical. <laughs> and I guess we'll find out, though um, it seems like there's a quite a long convoluted process for actually having this go through and it, they need to have approvals by different government agencies. So it's going to take a while, but... That sounds like baloney to me. <laughs> it's baloney. The Board of Control makes recommendation to the three boards. It's just a matter of putting it on the calendar and voting on it. Of course, in secret, because there are no Republicans left. There's only <laughs> Democrats in the town board and in the village of Larchmont board. But still, they should have a vote. Don't um, you agree that we should at least have the, um, we should follow the, the rules. appearance, the yes. appearance, the um, how would you describe it? Oh, uh, it's appearance. Well, the is formalities not the right. of democracy. Yeah, yes. There should be some 
um, steps taken that make it seem like it's a democracy, even though it's not? Well, yeah, we need to keep the format keep, of democracy yeah, yeah. so that uh, we need to keep it up a good front. Rusty. We, we need to keep up a good front in case democracy ever returns to this area. Oh well, hopefully in our lifetimes, mm -hmm. but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we may be doing a show from the um, the firehouse. Mm -hmm. That would be sort of fun. Yeah. Um, well, that's the fun stuff. <laughs> Is it? That's yes. all. Those are the only two items on your list? Well, there wasn't any furniture share house information that oh, I was given. No, none. <laughs> we rely on um, the great executive director of furniture uh, share yes. house to keep us going. Yeah, she's not, she's busy. <laughs> she's busy collecting furniture. <laughs> well, that is the point. Yes, it is. <laughs> so you were interested in something about the county pump station? Hmm. Something about the county pump station? Open your wallet. Oh. <laughs> that got my in, attention. You're going to be interested also. Oh, okay. So, many, many moons ago, maybe in the early 90s, we started work on the, uh, a project known in shorthand as inflow and infiltration. And the nature of the project was to fix up the sewer pipes. Why is that? They were old, and a lot of them had a lot of cracks. And when you have old sewer pipes that have cracks, when the rain comes down and the water goes, seeps into the ground, the fresh water out of the sky seeps into the sewer pipes and gets pumped along to the wastewater station in New Rochelle. But that's more water than the plant is accustomed to handling. Right. Because ordinarily, if you look inside a sewer pipe, maybe only half of it's full, but the, the because of the fresh, cracks, the fresh the water, water, is water going in. infiltrates. Okay. Because goes of cracks the in the old. Um... One source. Okay. And it overwhelms the plant, and the plant can't do the treatment to the level that it should be doing it, and is required to do before it dumps the treated water. Have you seen Bill Gates was drinking water that had uh, come from a sewer system and had been refined? And he was sitting there, I think it was Bill Gates, and he drank it. I don't know that this really, that it actually came from this refinement, this refining process, but that was a little scary. <laughs> Glad that was in California and not here. Anyway, the other thing, the other end of it is inflow. What's inflow? Inflow is people who have um, sump pumps designed to take the rainwater and from I their basement. I do too. And, uh, a lot of people had sump pumps, so said the engineers, yet to be proved. A lot of people had sump pumps connected to their sewer outflow pipes so that that would be an additional source of rainwater coming up underneath the basement, okay. gets caught by the sump pump, pumped over to the um, sanitary drain, and then into the pipes, and then again off to the plant, also adding to the overload on the plant. So the plant couldn't uh, do the necessary treatment work when there's so much water coming into it it's only I forgot what it's rated for I used to know the answer how many gallons of water a day but it was overwhelmed by maybe 10 or 20 maybe 30 maybe 30 percent so what it was sending out into the sound wasn't as fully treated as it's supposed to be so at that time the county came down we fixed the pump station we fixed the pipes we lined this was like lined, 25 years ago 20 years ago maybe 15 years ago we lined the pipes we put a pump station in Flint Park where there wasn't a pump station. In fact, it intruded on what we were going to do down there for the, uh, for the uh, access to waterfront. Mm -hmm. And they put this big monster thing down there in a gigantic park, uh, uh, paving uh, area for the trucks to park in so they could clean out these pumps. And so it was really a project, and nobody wanted this. I don't, I don't know if you remember this, but we started talking about it in the mid-'90s maybe. And nobody wanted this pump station near them, so we found this location. I can't remember who came up with the idea of putting it in Flint Park. It might have been Ned. Ned Ben. Might have been Ned. He sort of threw it out, and then we picked up, I think, I, I don't remember. Might have okay. been him. Anyway, so we got them to build it over there. The rate payers, the s people who pay sewer tax to the New Rochelle Sewer District, paid for all this work. Not the people in the Blind Brook district, not the people in the Mamaroneck district, not the people up county. We paid for it. 
we had an argument that said, wait, 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 wait a second, we're at the bottom of the watershed. Right. We get all the nonsense that comes rolling down that you all release, and then we wind up having to fix it up because it gets into our pipes. We wind up having to fix it up, clean it before it goes out to the sound. So how's about you make a contribution? <laughs> I bet that went yeah, over that didn't, big. That, yeah, <laughs> that didn't go over real well. And, and my recollection is, nevertheless, even though it didn't go over real well, that we did wind up with some grant money to help fund this gigantic project that went on. Who feeds into the New Rochelle system, New Rochelle wastewater plant, New Rochelle, uh, it's part of Pelham, it might be Pelham Manor, or it might be the village of Pelham, I don't remember which. Part, a small part of the town of Merrick and the entire village of Larchmont. So all the stuff goes over there for treatment. It's right where uh, Noam Bramson, the mayor in New Rochelle, wanted to put this fabulous Echo Bay development. I can't <laughs> it's on Echo Bay. Oh, dear. It's right there on Echo Bay. I just can't imagine why anybody was thinking about it. Anyway, it was defeated. So now, so, so we signed, all the papers were signed. We did all the construction, blah, 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 blah. We're bouncing along, yada, 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 yada. All of a sudden, and I say all of a sudden because it's now first in the newspapers, I assume the back office knew about this for a while. The DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation of the State of New York, comes in and says to the county, you have got to you have got to completely clear up all inflow and infiltration by 2017, and you've got to put upgrades in the plant, and who's going to pay for that? Kaplowitz, <laughs> Kaplowitz, who is, uh, he's the county legislator, Michael Kaplowitz. Okay. County legislator who was doing the talking to the reporter here said, hey, you know what, this could, have, this could be $20 million. And I, I saw this, and I went completely insane. Really? You told us if we did what we had to do back in the, in the 90s and the 00s that things were going to be fixed. Now you come back and say, oh, sorry, it isn't fixed. So all the money that you spent to do this stuff doesn't count for diddly. We are going to tell you you have to spend another $20 million. Who's paying for that? The ratepayers in those couple of municipalities I just mentioned, which is us. Really? Really? How in God's name can you come down to us and say, this is a, I don't know, Kaplowitz says it's a $20 million bill for this. By the way, their people say, oh, it's mostly infiltration. Baloney. Nobody ever proved that. No, nobody ever okay. proved that. And we had ordinances here and we had inspections. You don't get, you don't get, a, you don't get a certificate to close on your house right. until you've got the, the, the water taken care of in the proper way. You can't feed it into the sanitary. But we have two dry wells in the backyard and our sump pumps go to the dry wells. So I don't, when we built it, I was on the village board. When we built these things, I was on the village board. And I said, we're not fixing up this house and tap into the sewer system. That would just be idiotic. The rule is you can't do it. Lead by example. So we, we put these, I mean, they're like big shells well, right with holes in Well, but we've had a dry well, you know, from like maybe 30 years ago that probably isn't working anymore. Yeah, they silt it. Mean, they got yeah. to them clean yeah. over a period of time if, if, there's, if, there, if there isn't, if it isn't built the right way. Okay. You have to have them cleaned earlier. If it is built the right way, you still have to have them cleaned, but it's a longer okay. period of time before you have to do it. So anyway, don't come down here and tell us that we owe, we're going to be stuck with a $20 million bill. We did what you asked. You want to come down here and fix this stuff up? You bring the money. <laughs> bring the money. Otherwise, we're getting taxed twice to do the, I mean, the, the pump in, in pump station in Flint Park. Who knows what, whether that had been required if you had come down and said, well, we're going to come down here in a couple of years and tell you you got to redo it anyway. Maybe that would have been the wrong thing to do from an engineering point of view. Right. And we could have saved the money that we all paid for that pump station. And then there's one over on, uh, um, oh, what's the name? It's, it's the end of uh, Flint Avenue. It's, this is government insanity. If you want this fixed, you bring the cash. I'm okay with cleaning the water. I think it's great. Sound is much cleaner than it used to be. And, and it's, it's swimmable. But there are some, some days that are better than other days. <laughs> well, that's right. the way it is with water. Uh, well, I, that, oh, I get that. But, uh, but really, if you want this done, bring the money. S what George Latimer is our state senator. Right. Steve Otis is our, is our state assembly person. We have uh, Catherine Parker in the county legislature, right? We have uh, a governor who is theoretically from the county of Westchester and benefits by us taking this wastewater and cleaning it up, who, who by the way, didn't pay their taxes when, <laughs> when they did all those add-ons in their house. 
Surprise, surprise. Oh, I didn't know we had to pay tax on that. <laughs> Gee whiz, what did the rest of and us do? It's busy. It's oh, hard to keep oh up with God. everything. Anyway, <laughs> get to work, people. Right, Elliot Engel in the in the in the uh, in the uh, U.S. House of Representatives, and and we have Chuck Schumer and and uh, Mrs. Gillibrand in the in the uh, in the Senate. Get to work. Find something. Go to EPA. Find one of their grant programs. Come up with something. You all be creative. Don't come down here and kick us around and say, well, you know, after putting in all the money that we put in before, it's very nice that you did it. Thanks a lot. Now here's a bunch more money that you can put in. Well, yeah, we all agree the sound needs to be clean. But it doesn't mean that we need to pay for it. Well, is anyone fighting back? Oh, well, would you, would you look around? Who's fighting back? <laughs> Let's see. Everybody whose name I mentioned is a Democrat. Right. Who runs the village of Larchmont? Democrats. Who runs the city of New Rochelle? Democrats. Who runs the town of Maranek? Democrats. So let's ask the question. Would anybody in the Democrat Party want to say something out loud that would stimulate other Democrats who are in, uh, who are in more elevated elective positions to look bad? Like, hey, get this done. No, we can't do it. <laughs> would that be a good thing? Seriously. Well, it must one be a nice way to put it. One party, yeah, one party government. It, it, it yeah. doesn't make any difference. They don't care. So we're going to have to pay twenty million. Who's going to? I don't know whether we pay all twenty. But maybe it'll be done on a on a geographic proportionate basis. Maybe it'll be done on a population basis. Who knows how it's going to be divided up? It might be on the number of the yardage of the pipes that go from wherever the location is into the sewer plant. I don't know. I don't remember fussing about this last time, because I, my recollection was we wound up with most of the money being taken care of not by us. Which was a well, good that was result. Good, yes. But but right now, all I'm seeing is a big number, and I'm seeing a Democrat chain from top to bottom, and nobody says anything to anybody. I'm surprised the newspaper got the even got the information. Oh, you mean because <laughs> they, they don't? Why would you? Why yeah, would you, you want know, people You don't want to put this stuff out there. This was supposed to have been cleaned up. These were. Oh. Orga <laughs> I mean, this is just it this just shouldn't be. It's just awful. It's just bring the money. Somebody get off your duff and bring the money. And we get it done. The engineering is doable. Just let's get it done. But I don't understand why we get to pay for it twice. You screwed it up the first time and didn't do the right engineering. How do we get the bill the second time? Answer, it's like the EPA cleaned up that mine out in Utah, and oh, the thing collapsed and yeah. created a, a complete environmental tragedy. I don't know, some kind of river full of, I don't know what. Awful stuff. Yeah, bad stuff. <laughs> and, oh, we didn't plan for that. Wow. <laughs> Good work, government. Well, at least they have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't. Well, oh, well, that is upsetting. So this is this. I was feeling really good till you brought that up. <laughs> well, I didn't bring it up to make you feel better. I, I brought know. it up to get you aggravated, so you can <laughs> kick your legislators to do something about it, and everybody else out there as well. Okay, so um, George Latimer comes to Rotary um, for lunch often. Thank you. So I made you informed. Yes. Okay, Thank you. I will bring that up. You're welcome. Now, um, we have some other water issues. The village of Larchmont is going to get a little boat. <laughs> <sighs> yes. So there's a, there's, this is the Larchmont Ledger, another august publication that emanates from our very midst. <laughs> and at the end of a, at the end of a, of a uh, six, let's see, what would you call this? I would call this about a six-paragraph article on the last village board meeting, okay. most of which was about the work session, which, of course, uh, w at which the public cannot speak. But uh, the first thing that they dealt with on the front page, this is, a, no, it's below the fold. It's not above the fold. Okay. Below the fold yes. is a typographical error in the leaf blower law. Oh, man, you guys are good. <laughs> They're really, they're on top of stuff, seriously. <laughs> but at the very last paragraph, at the end of the article, you have to go, because of your interest driven by the, <laughs> by the, by the, the uh, riveting prose. The hasn't put you to sleep The riveting yet. <laughs> prose on the first page, you go to page four, okay. and there is an article about somebody who I have very high regard for, namely the fire chief, John Caparelli. Yes. But it's an article about, and this is, this is government in action. It's great. It's great. <laughs> we 
can get a rubber inflatable boat, a rib, for the Larchmont Fire Department okay. to put on the harbor in Larchmont, as if these people actually have any idea what the harbor in Larchmont <laughs> really looks like, because they've never looked at a map. I have the maps. <laughs> there are dotted lines, and then there are dotted lines. Some part is the village of Ameriknek, some part's the town of Ameriknek. Okay. It's not even clear They're to me that the patrol? village of Larchmont has jurisdiction. They're going to get a rib. And the reason they're going to get Which this... Which is rubber. Rubber inflatable boat. Okay. R.I.B. They're going to get this because if you give the General Services Administration, in, I guess in Washington, 200 bucks to cover their postage and handling, <laughs> they will send you out of their excess boat inventory... A Which rubber inflatable boat. Have... Now, now, wait a second. <laughs> so now, what is a rubber inflatable boat going to do in Larchmont Harbor? First of all, this is 200 bucks, and it's sounds, wow, you read this and you say, these guys are sharp. They're right on top of stuff. <laughs> because for 200 bucks, we get a rib out. It's about eight feet long, 10 feet long. Okay. And then, if you have a little familiarity with things on the water, you say, well, that's not going to do a damn bit of good. <laughs> you're going to have to put some engines on it. Oh, and then you're okay. going to have to put some equipment on it. If, okay. you, if you've been a mayor or a trustee radar before. Radar or something? No, not radar. Just life-saving equipment. What the, what's okay. the point of having this stupid thing unless you're going to do something with it? Right. All right. So $200 doesn't begin to tell the tale of what it's <laughs> actually going to cost. More equipment, engines, stuff, maintenance, storage, the whole nine yards. But then here's what happens inevitably in government. I can tell you from my personal experience, government at this level. We have a boat. Man, this is great. We, we used it twice last year. But you know what we really need? We really need like a 25-footer <laughs> with, maybe, with maybe three 250s on the back. Three 250s enough to send you 50 miles an hour. With maybe th three 250s on the back. And then take turns patrolling, huh? <laughs> you, I can hear the conversation. Well, we have the boat. And, you know, we actually used it a couple of times. But it's too damn small. It doesn't have enough room for all the equipment. It doesn't go fast enough. <laughs> so this $200, in my humble estimation, yeah. leads to, in the next year after the receipt of this thing, probably 10 to 15 grand to kit it out, put it together, fill it up with gasoline, fill it up with, well, it's probably a two-cycle. Well, and you have experience. You're a boat owner, so you know about these things. I, I don't know if that qualifies me to comment about what they're going to do about <laughs> this, but I had, there's no doubt. Otherwise, why would you have this thing? Second point is, separate and apart from the expense of this, which is not $200, stupid. Right. It's not. I mean, separate and apart is, what are you going to do with it? Now, here's a question. <laughs> Supposing there's a fire on a boat in the harbor. Yes. Now, fire trucks are these huge things, and they have water on them and stuff. What are you going to do with the rib? It's a little inflatable boat. How many... 265-pound firefighters are you going to get <laughs> with their full equipment <laughs> on a rib? I mean, just think about this. The, the, town, the village of Ameranek has a police boat, which is a real boat that looks like a 22 to 25-footer. Uh, it has real engines on it. There are two cops on there. They go patrolling around, and they can stop people just like the Coast Guard can. Oh, really? Uh, let okay. me see your registration. Let me see your safety equipment, blah, blah, blah. You're speeding in the harbor. Either this harbor, they don't know it, that they can actually uh, summons people in pieces of what is called Larchmont Harbor because they belong to the village, and in Village Harbor. So they okay. actually do stuff. And they have, I don't want to say I know the frequency with which they patrol, but I've seen them around more. I've seen them around a lot, let's put it that way. Well, good. But what are these guys got? These are, this fire, this, this <laughs> fire department. What, seriously, think about this. Think about the expense that's kind of like the library expansion. We'll tell you it's going to cost whatever it is, a million or a million and a half dollars, you know, open up your walls. But what about maintaining it? What about cleaning right. it? What about heating it? What right. about electrifying it? What? <laughs> this stuff doesn't come free. You actually have to pay for things. <laughs> well, there's the investment, and then there's the ongoing You know that upkeep. better than anybody. You're a financial advisor. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Right? So here, I just thought that was really cute. Is that they, the, the newspaper reporter, whoever this person is, I'm not going to mention any names, the newspaper reporter apparently thought this was a point worth making. And all it does is just highlight the ridiculousness 
of local government and this particular group in, in local government. <laughs> $200 becomes 15, or I don't know, 10 grand, 15 grand, who knows what. Well, to do what? And say there's a fire on a boat, don't you need a pumper or something, a boat pumper or something? You don't, you, you can't. If there's a fire on a boat, you should have Boku fire extinguishers. Oh, so you really have to sort of take you care have of your to, own. You have, to ha okay. you have to have that. That is required equipment by the Coast Guard. Okay. And if you're smart, you don't have the number that they require. You have maybe two or three times the number that they require. Okay. So if on a boat, it's really up to the yeah. But if you're not going to drive the truck over to the Larchmont yeah. Yacht Club and get on a rib <laughs> with three guys and fire extinguishers and run out to but I, I just, I don't see that. The boat will be in, <laughs> under the water before you get there. Just don't see it. So, oh. have we run out of time? Are we done laughing? Um, we have another minute to laugh if you want to make any further I don't comments. Think this is funny. It's not funny. It's just Well, it's, it's just silliness. preposterous. Yes, that's what it is. It's preposterous. <laughs> think it through, people. Yeah, Think you know, through. so you can do this little thing, but is there an end point? Think it through. Next time we want to talk about water meters versus water tanks. Oh, Just I put that look on your list. I to had that stuff. And we're going to talk about, about the, the housing project over in Pinebrook, go counting towards the, uh, the county's uh, satisfaction of its settlement agreement in terms of the number of affordable units to be built and the fact that Hillary Clinton did not get Chappaqua to go along with the 26 or 28 that were proposed to be built there, and now causing the county to be in default on, the, on, the, well, on their numbers. May did that, meant to do that, right? Maybe meant to do that. Yeah. Well, I never thought water would be quite so interesting, so thank you very much. <laughs> And thank you very much to um, the talent that's on the other side of the yes. cameras. <laughs> for, for rejoining us after the summer, <laughs> when I thought you all were going to quit. <laughs> um, take care, and I hope you come out to uh, Larch Larchmont's 125th anniversary. Oh, on September Sounds 26th. like fun. On September 26th. Yes. Thank you. Take care. Good night.